beauty in disguise Put your fist up in the skies How do you achieve success in anything while you don't have people supporting you, believing in you, investing in you? What is it that motivates a successful person to keep going even when it seems everything is going wrong? These are some questions that you can ask yourself to access your divine mind. We have grown up in a microwave society and we have a microwave mentality. Oftentimes we want what we want and we want it now. The journey builds wisdom, activates the ability for you to accomplish things you would not have accomplished any other way. Sometimes we are expecting for external people to make us feel capable within ourselves to achieve whatever it is we are hoping to achieve. But it is a blessing to not have people rooting for you. It is a blessing to have to figure it all out on your own. Because when you arrive to that goal, that has manifested. You will be able to celebrate yourself because you know that the inspiration and the motivation necessary to achieve that goal was all you. We give away our power when we allow other people's perception of us to determine our next decisions in life. It is time for us to put boundaries around our personal power. Your personal power, your personal ashe, that extra oomph that makes you you is yours uniquely. Sometimes it's difficult to have a mental mindset that continuously reminds you of how capable you are. For many of us who have experienced trauma, it is sometimes difficult to believe in ourselves. Maybe someone we looked up to was ashamed of us, didn't believe in us, and we took on that energy internally and we began to feel inferior, not good enough, not smart enough, not pretty enough. The mind is like a river. Consciousness streams through that river. A strategy that I use to continue the path forward, even when it seems as if I am walking all alone. This was something I created doing shadow work and if you are not new to some of the techniques that I share you know about the PRP which is the positive reframe pivot 
practicing reframing and pivoting your perceptions in a positive way. One of the secret weapons that has helped me to endure tough times, to feel strong and confident enough in myself that I am not needing other people's perception of me to prove my value and who I am and the decisions that I make for myself. This strategy is called a positive rumination practice. This is the shadow side of the PRP technique I first shared with you all. A positive rumination practice is created by using the negative ruminations in your mind as a catalyst for a positive rumination in your mind. Many of us try to get rid of the mind's tendency to worry, ruminate, catastrophize, and assume the worst. Sometimes we are more familiar with perceiving the glass half empty because it's what we have always done. Instead of trying to get rid of some of the shadow aspects that you may be discovering, take them and transmute them. Positive rumination teaches the brain to follow self-awareness using mindfulness as a guide to make positive assumptions in place of the negative ruminations. Assuming the worst is an effective trauma, but does it benefit you to think this way? I know for me, I haven't found any benefits in me worrying, catastrophizing, and assuming the worst. If this does not benefit you, these unhelpful perceptions do not sum up the essence of who you are because you are not your mind. You are not your thoughts. Your mind is yours. Therefore, you have the right and the responsibility to think supportive thoughts. Let me give you an example. Maybe you reach out to your, your person, your partner, and they don't text you back like usual. Your mind may say, they must be mad at you about something. They must be doing something that they ain't got no business doing. They must be up to something and you need to be suspicious. Ask yourself, interrupt that stream of consciousness by asking, is this thought protecting me? or benefiting me in any way. Once you isolate this as a thought that reflects the old way of ruminating, worrying, catastrophizing, and thinking about things that simply do not feel good, nor do they bring any benefit to you, you then have the power to pivot. If you can't stop the thought, 
ruminate on something else ruminate on an alternative reason that is more positive by assuming the best you could think a thought such as he or she may just be having a busy day this thought isn't a reflection of anything negative which eases the anxiety, the fear of abandonment, and betrayal. Our mind is a quantum computer. If we are wired to fire thoughts, attempting to stop thinking in a similar way that we previously thought, in response to our traumatic conditioning. You are becoming a mental gymnast and you are learning how to do cartwheels with your thoughts. You just completely turn them around. Mental gymnastics can be dangerous if you're thinking thoughts that do not serve you or anyone else, or they can be thoughts that are worthy of celebration. The longer we ruminate on the negative assumptions, the more we reinforce the old narrative. Thus, re-traumatizing ourselves over and over. You deserve better than that. Your mind is meant to be your servant, never your master. Instead of hating yourself for thinking in suspicious ways, worrying, ruminating, assuming that everyone has a problem with you or is out to get you. You begin to think thoughts that affirm positivity, that affirm the love you are nurturing for yourself. Instead of trying to escape this negative mental chatter to make it stop, simply ruminate on something that feels good to you. It doesn't matter if the rumination is true. What matters is the emotional feedback the thought creates. This is what I have been using as an expert warrior <laughs> to become a mental gymnast. The more you have intrusive negative thoughts, the more opportunities you get to practice. At some point, you begin to see what I once believed made me unlovable, unworthy, made me have low self-esteem and lack confidence because no one enjoys feeling weak, whether it's weak-minded, weak in the body, in any way. We all have an ego. So instead of seeing the ego as an enemy, the ego becomes an ally. That way, when these thoughts come up, you won't feel that sense of dread and that feeling of hatred towards yourself for it because you are shaping new neural synapses within the brain by creatively turning that thought on its head. 
Shadow work is powerful. However, if we are only reading books and journaling and using mirror magic and affirmations, we're not getting the full benefit of shadow work. Shadow work must become something we integrate in our day-to-day -day life. So negative ruminations can become fun. Get creative with it. I mean, you can really get jiggy with it and think the best, assume the best. And by doing this, you are no longer demonizing your shadow self, causing the ego to feel like an ally. Your inner child is listening. Imagine how safe your inner child feels as you are being observed, treating your mind in this manner. That is what inspires me to continue doing this work. You are capable of achieving things you never knew possible simply by using the positive rumination practice. I gotta ask, you down with PRP? Yeah, you know me. <laughs> I hope that this motivational message inspired you, illuminated you. Thank you so much for coming to my little spot in the new verse on the internet and let me know how did this technique feel to you? What was your biggest takeaway? Will you be trying this out? I would love to hear it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that button so we can spread more beautiful, enlightening ways of embracing the aspects of ourselves we once deemed to be unworthy of seeing the light of day. We are writing new verses, scripting the song our soul came to sing. Uh-huh, that's what we're doing. Y'all already know what it is. May your third eye has just been kissed. Numi stay, namaste. One love, Ashe.